Hi, I'm Beverly Welch. We're here today at the Arbor Gate in Tomball, Texas with our dear friend Angela Chandler. Good morning, Beverly. How Good are morning. you today? I'm great, Angela. So we're going into winter. One of the most popular fruit trees here on the Gulf Coast are citrus. Yeah, our There's, staple fruit. It is. It's so easy to grow, but people are often a little bit shy because of cold hardiness. We're fortunate that we really don't have much winters here but we do occasionally have the freeze. We do. So we're gonna talk about today how we're gonna protect and winterize our citrus, whether they're in the ground or in a container. That's right, it'll apply to both. Yes. So are there some steps we should be doing through the fall to get these guys prepared? There actually are. You know, like with anything else, it's the preparation that we do is gonna, or is geared towards making the tree healthier and more resistant to the freezes. Okay. A little more resiliency. So starting in September, we're going to feed with kelp meal, just right. according to the package directions is fine. Uh, there are uh, chemicals or components in the kelp meal that are going to thicken the cell walls of the citrus okay. and make it a little tougher it, from that standpoint. Perfect. Then the other thing we're going to do is, starting in September, um, we can spray the foliage with seaweed, liquid seaweed as well. Every two to three weeks is fine. Right. It does the same thing through the foliage. It's going to make it okay. thicker, tougher, and a little bit more resilient. Um, if for some reason uh, you get caught by winter right. and, and you don't get a chance to do these things ahead of time, then really between freeze events all winter, you can spray the seaweed and it'll really help your citrus out. So okay. those are things we should be doing way before we look at our first freeze. All right, so we're just getting them ready. We're getting them ready, okay. toughening them up. And again, whether or not your citrus is in the ground or in a large yes. patio container, what we do in case of a freeze has a lot to do with the age of the tree, yes. the length of time it's been in its container or in the ground, the type of citrus that it is. So can you walk us through real quick what sure we can. need to do? Um, any citrus that's about that's less than five years old in your garden. So relatively yes. newly planted. Yeah, very newly planted. What we would consider juvenile trees still. Okay. They're going to be a little less hardy than a mature tree in your landscape. So if you know that you have a, a series of immature trees, mm -hmm. I would pay a little bit more attention to them and maybe allow five degrees of leniency All to right. say I would protect them five degrees sooner than I would a mature tree. All right. And again, condition has a lot to do with it. If you've paid attention to your trees and you have big, healthy citrus trees, yeah. they're going to be a lot tougher and you could maybe go the other way. Say they can take five degrees more mm -hmm. of, that, of that extra cold temperature. But um, if you've had trouble uh, with, with any kind of insect pressure that year before, then I would consider them in a slightly weakened condition okay. and we're going to baby them a little bit. So Even mature trees. environmental conditions has a lot to do with to it. The winter. Right. And the main goal really when we're protecting our citrus, it's okay if we have some damage here on the foliage. Oh sure. We're trying to protect this ground. We are. Yeah, in fact that's something important to mention that we could actually sustain canopy damage. You know, we don't want it, right? but we could sustain canopy damage and not lose our tree as long as we do protect the graph. So we're gonna concentrate our efforts there. Okay. And then in a secondary way, we're also gonna do what we can to protect the canopy as well. And you know, if we do have damage to the canopy, it's not something that you go out and prune right away. No, in fact, we actually recommend that you don't do any pruning. The damaged, tissues are going to somewhat protect the inside of the tree that hasn't been damaged. It'll give it a little more shelter. But in addition to that, we don't want to do any heavy pruning until the danger of frost is passed. Right. So just bear with it, put up with a little bit right. of that unsightliness and wait till that first few weeks of March to start doing any major pruning. Right, and we prune early like that. You know, we oftentimes will get a week or two of 70 degree weather That's mid winter. Right it will think it's time to grow again that's exactly and will right. sustain even more damage. It can because that's a very tender growth. That new growth is very tender. So you want to hold it back as much as possible. Okay, so the forecast is for a freeze. Right. For a, uh, and when you say freeze, we don't mean just a dip down frost. Oh right? no. So when you say freeze, what temperature range are we looking well, for? Well, we're talking about the hard freezes. Okay. And we're also talking about the duration of the freeze. You know, quite often we have what we call the pre-dawn dip. Right. Starting about five o'clock, it'll dip below freezing temperatures. And then as soon as the sun comes up, it pops right back up. We're really, our citrus is really not in much danger there. Okay. What we're looking for is that sustained freezing temperatures and for a long period of time, four to six hours or more. All right. That's when we need to be the most careful. But the type of citrus makes a difference too. 
kumquats and satsumas, they'll take down to the 20s or even more. So we, we seldom need to really worry about those trees. Okay. But the lemons and limes are a little bit different. They're right. the least hardy of our citrus. So in, when we're getting to those, we need to monitor them, pretty much keep an eye on them all winter. And we do have a blog on the website. Right. Um, and we'll, we'll make sure everybody has a link to that. Okay. That will give you a chart that shows you uh, from, uh, from hardiest to least hardy. Okay. So you can kind of monitor your citrus. Okay, so the forecast tonight is for a freeze. Okay. Okay. And it's going to be a sustained freeze. All right. 46 or more hours. Yes. Now, I have fruit on my tree. Right. Do I go pick it? Not necessarily. Um, the fruit is not going to freeze until we get down below about that 26 degrees or so, 26, 27 degrees right. for four hours or more. Oh, yeah. So if we're not going to be there, there's no reason to rush out and grab that fruit. Okay. The one thing we do want to keep in mind is that if we do have a fruit load, that's one of the things that makes the whole tree a little less hardy. So we want to kind of keep an eye on that. But it's not necessary. And you know, uh, citrus is a winter fruit. So right. we don't want to be put in a position of having to run out and harvest fruit that's not yet at its peak of perfection. All right, so we're going to have a freeze tonight. What's the first thing I do? Okay, so we want to con consider a few things. One, we think of mulch as an insulator, right. and it is. But in this case, we want to use the soil as a heat sink. Okay. So early that, as early that morning as you can, before the freeze, we want to go out and pull, break the mulch back away from the tree, and we want to water that soil all the way around the tree very deeply and okay. thoroughly. Then we want to let the sun do its job and heat that damp soil around the tree as long as possible, right. going out and tenting the tree only when we need to in the late evening when temperatures are starting to drop. All right. Then we want to... And when you talk about tenting, yes. we're talking about using something we like are. these dirty bamboo stakes right. and literally making a teepee, if you will. Yeah, a teepee, or if you have soft soil, you can drive them in the ground. If you don't, you can teepee around them. Uh -huh. We want something tall enough that it can be above the foliage. Right. And we want to set this out far enough that when we do tent the tree, the frost fabric is not touching the foliage. That's we want to give them an air space all the way around. And what we're trying to do when we say tenting is we're designing a tent so that the, the warmth from the soil can go up into the canopy and the frost cloth will hold that warmth there as long as possible through that freezing night. So we're creating a greenhouse effect. We are ba basically creating a greenhouse effect, exactly. Okay. So then we want to pay attention to, after we've done that, we want to pay attention to the graph. There are several ways we can protect the graph. This pipe insulation is a great way to do it. All you need to do is split the pipe insulation, open it up, uh, wrap it around right. the trunk as much as possible. Uh, it'll just wrap itself around. If you're worried about it, you can always tape it closed, but it'll, it'll hold itself around the trunk. Then we can also, if we know we're having a really hard, long freeze, as we had several years ago, right. we want to do something to additionally insulate that. Uh -huh. um, we can use pine straw. In some cases, we want to put it thickly around there. After you have the pine straw up, if you'll wrap that pine straw in frost cloth or an old sheet, it'll give it a little additional insulation. Now, how far up the trunk or how far above this graph can I, we need I'd to go? I'd actually like it to be as far as possible. If okay. I can get it up to that, sec that first set of branches, I'm All going right. to. Um, if, if we don't have those things available or if we have a really hard freeze coming, then we need to bring out the big guns and we want to use soil to bank. Okay. Okay, so in that case we might, you know, it's, it's very easy to grab a couple of bags of soil so you don't have to dig soil up in your garden. Right. But here we're not talking about a loose mulch or compost. We want to get something that has some density up around that okay. to give it a lot of protection. Now, do we need to wrap the soil bank also you can. with the frost cloth? You can. Right. Any, anything that you do, it, we're, it's like layering when we're getting cold. Right. Anything you can do to layer gives you more protection. Now, a, after the freeze has passed, do we need to pull the soil back away from the trunk, or how long can we leave it that way? We actually should remove it as soon as possible. All right. Um, if, if we have two or three days of freeze, it's okay to leave it. But if, if we have what we normally do, which is one night of hard freeze, and then some balmy days and maybe even some warm days, we don't want to leave that on during that period of time. We want to pull that off. Doesn't mean that you want to move it completely away from the right, tree. Right, but just pull it just back so, pull it back so the tree can right, breathe. So it can breathe and it can continue growing. They're semi-dormant, but they're still growing through the winter. Okay. And then this is our frost cloth that we right. talked about that we'll use 
to wrap around our banking or our teepee. Right, and to, yeah, and to create the tent. Um, frost cloth comes in different thicknesses, but uh, insulate is one that we know is really dependable in our area. It's going to give you maybe up to seven degrees of protection. The watering in the soil is going to give you about two degrees. Yeah. So by the time we start adding up all of these things we're doing, we can get nine to ten degrees of extra protection and that's a lot that is that's a the lot. difference between life and death for citrus trees absolutely so it's really not a hard process no. to do it's something that we can start getting ready for and start fall. getting ready now and most often these are supplies that we have on hand they are and then like i say watch that predicted temperature sometimes we have a tendency to overreact and people will go out and wrap everything thinking that that's going right. to really help. If it's not going to get down to those really dicey temperatures, leave the trees alone. They'll be and okay. Absolutely never use plastic. Never use plastic. Plastic actually causes more damage yes. uh, and doesn't really do anything to help you. The only time I would ever consider using plastic is if we had a freeze coming with a very heavy rain predicted or a freezing rain. I would put the insulation on first and then, and then maybe use plastic to keep the insulation dry. I it has you. nothing to do for the tree. It's just to keep our fabric dry. So citrus, very easy. Very plant easy to, grow, to protect. Very productive and not to worry about cold weather. No, tougher than you think. We can get it through the winters easily. Perfect. Thanks, Angela. You bet.